with her coronavirus situation. We uh, previously had a video on that if you want to check that out. Um, but today, super exciting news. I am here with Leah Best, who is absolutely fantastic. She is a former professional athlete. She has lived in five different countries. And now she is back in the United States as a real working woman. And I'm very excited I get to talk to her. Hi, Leah. Hi. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. I'm a little bit bored staying inside, but that's all good. <laughs> yeah, that's that's always fun, isn't it? Yep. Uh, how is how is your quarantine going for you? Yeah, it's okay. I'm uh, I'm in between like you know fitness superstar and master chef. So I would have a great quarantine body, but I'm eating a lot at the same time. So. Master Chef, what are you cooking then? Um, it's a lot of French toast, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> a lot of French toast, a lot of pancakes, um, just different recipes with what we can find at the store, whatever they have left over, and like trying to be creative with that. Well, uh, are you able to like get all of the ingredients that you'll need for this? Because no. I know you're having a hard time here in San Diego. Yes, it was a. It's been quite hard. Um, it was like a week's search for some eggs. Uh, <laughs> the last time I couldn't find any flour or sugar. Oh, so it just depends what's in, what's out. I'm sure everyone's having the same problem. So yeah, yeah just trying to be creative, really, with whatever we can get. I mean, definitely, I find that being creative helps with the boredom, too, so. Yes, true. <laughs> All right, uh, let's quickly do um, a fast round here okay. uh, to start things off. Uh, chapstick or lip gloss? Chapstick. Cake or cookies? Cookies. Bubblegum or mint? Mint. Book or nook? Book. <laughs> Like, do you like to read, like, a tactile book, or do you like to read stuff online? Oh, a book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, beach or mountains? Beach. Inside or outside? Ooh. Trick question. We all have to be inside right now. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I would prefer to be, like, quarantined on the beach. So I mean, next time we have a pandemic, let's figure that out. Thank you. I think that's the problem with what uh, what Florida was having. Everyone wanted to be quarantined at the beach. Yeah, yeah. So, so, all right. Let's get into the small talk of things. You know, uh, where are you living right now? I'm in Texas, mostly because you know I, I work in Texas, uh, and it's great. Yeah, I'm in Texas. I'm in an apartment complex, which is nice. That's about it. Since quarantine, not a lot to do. Not really allowed to do much else. What What is the best thing? Because when I come visit you, what is like the best thing about where you live? Um. Well, the weather's really nice. It's always warm. It's pretty much you know we're just north of the border here. So if you can imagine like American Mexico, which is great actually. I love it. Like such authentic Mexican food. There's also really good sushi. Um, the beach is about 45 minutes away. And there's like a lot of, actually like a lot of nature parks and just things to do, which is nice. I think my favorite part of that was there's a lot of Mexican food and lots of sushi. Yeah, you know? there is. There's really <laughs> good sushi down here, which was shocking because I moved from LA um, and I was really pretty snobby on like, oh, my favorite food is sushi, but it's definitely not as good as the ones in downtown LA, but it's Pretty good. I was pleasantly surprised. What is your favorite restaurant there then? What would um, you suggest? Oh, it's a hard, hard tie between Komori's, which is a um, sushi inspired restaurant, and Taco Palenque, which is a fast food <laughs> Mexican restaurant, which has the best guacamole I've tasted in my entire life. It's amazing. And it's drive through. It's like a fast food restaurant, but they don't just give you like, they're not stingy about the guacamole. It's a lot on there, which I really value that quality. Yeah, I mean, I judge places based on the guac. Exactly. Guac and the chips and the salsa. Yes, it's very important to me also. <laughs> All right, let's get into like the bigger questions, I guess, of like, who are you? Uh -huh. uh, like. 
who are you and then how did you get to where you are? Um, well, I'm Leah. I, uh, I guess I went to Cal State Fullerton for my undergrad in communications. And um, after I graduated, I played volleyball there. After I graduated, I went overseas and played professional volleyball for like four, four years. After playing professionally in Europe, I went back and I got my master's in mass communication. And then after that, I came back to LA and I was actually working in a marketing firm for about a year and just really didn't enjoy it at all. Um, so then I decided to like really go back to what I was passionate about and that's volleyball. But this time I went on the coaching side of things. So, Can you talk about playing a professional sport? Cause I feel like that's just such a unique experience that you've had, you know, it's just, it's yeah. a wonderful, unique thing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was so great to be able to like travel and experience that and make friends from really all over the world. Um, and at the same time, it's, it's really fun. It's also really hard. It's really hard to be away from like your family and your friends at home and missing like Easter or birthday parties or even funerals. Like a lot of people don't understand that aspect of it. Um, but it prepared me a lot for quarantine because it's also <laughs> a little bit lonely. Um, not always lonely, but a little bit because you're over there as a professional. So you eat sleep, train, and recover. And they are very serious about their recovery. So recovery is not like, as I found out the hard way, it's not like taking a shopping day in Paris. Um, it's, they're very serious about it. You're staying at home and stretching and rolling out. So you're like at home recovering or you're training. Do you have any crazy stories? Not that I want to share on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer. I like that. Uh, what did what made you decide to move overseas? Because as you said, it is it is hard and it is a bit isolating to, you know, pick up and move to a country where you don't necessarily speak the language. Mm, yeah. Um, well, one, it's always exciting. And if you get the opportunity, I think, to travel, especially if you don't necessarily have to pay for it, it's amazing. No, if you like get the opportunity to really be immersed in like a totally different culture that has different values and like learn about that culture, um, it's like an amazing experience that you could never get otherwise. And there's nothing else you could do for something like that. Um, it's just totally life changing. I my particular, to, sorry. I was just gonna say like I talked to one of my friends recently, and like they were talking about their time like abroad but they were doing a study abroad and it was very different for them because uh you know even though they were living overseas they were still living with all of the other university students who came with them right so, playing is like yeah. as a as a professional and as an american um there's a lot of leagues that like really limit the use of foreigners mm -hmm. so you may be the only american and definitely one of the few english speakers on the team um, so you're really forced to kind of go out and fend for yourself, which is great, actually. It's very scary and hard. There's a lot of charades involved, but <laughs> it's you can't beat it. Um, yeah. I always find myself becoming a caricature of myself to get ideas across. Absolutely. Like, every emotion is times 10. Yeah, but everyone, everyone I met was super helpful and really tried to help me understand the culture and the language and all of all the different languages and cultures, which was fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, when did you decide that it was your time to end, to retire and to stop? Because I know, like, like you said, you came back to volleyball through, through coaching. Volleyball is such an integral part of who you are and how you grew up and everything. Right, um, definitely. So I was actually born in England. And then I moved to America when I was about 13. And I started playing volleyball when I was like 15, really. Um, and since that first day, it just never stopped. Like my whole life was filled with volleyball and everything else was came second to volleyball, didn't matter what it was. And that was fine because I was in love with volleyball and it was my only passion. You know, I was just really like embraced by it. But as I got older, it started to appear to me that 
you know, that's not the only thing in my life anymore. That's not like my only passion or it's not the only goal that I wanted to pursue. And so I found myself like in practice, like, oh, I really wish I could be at my friend's baby shower. Oh, I really wish I could have been at my grandma's funeral, which are things that you have to sacrifice. And, you know, that just, that feeling kept happening more and more. And so eventually I was like, I'm not wanting to be in practice. And so if you don't want to practice, then you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. Cause that's like, you should, that's your job. So if you don't want to be in that work and you're not happy there, then you need to, it's time to pursue something else. I loved my career. I'm so happy I got to do it. And I'm so happy that I had the opportunity to make the decision to walk away. Cause a lot of people don't get the opportunity to make that choice. They like get injured or something happens and their career ends. But I'm really fortunate that I, I felt like I completed my career and ended it on a really, really good note. That's great. I'm so happy for you. Uh, so speaking of ending your career and coming back, um, what has been the most challenging thing for you to enter the, the, the real workforce or the real mm. world? Uh, what was the, what was the biggest obstacle you faced? Um, the biggest obstacle, I think, like for me personally, even though I am a full adult, I felt like a lot of the times as an athlete, you really are catered to, um, everyone is really invested in your well being and what you need to do to be successful. Um, I felt like in the, the real world, um, people, they don't act, they don't care about you that much. Um, you know, you're here to do a job and get it done and that's fine. But as far as like, you need to be here on time, this is what you need to bring. That doesn't happen. It's more of a like, you signed up for this, go. And that's sort of all the instruction um, that you get. <laughs> Well, what's been the best thing about coming over and transitioning into the real workforce? <laughs> a lot of times I think I could go back. I could play a couple more years. Um, <laughs> no, my job, right, I love my job right now. I'm the assistant coach for the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley and I adore my job. And I love who I work with, um, the girls on the team, and my boss is great, and the whole school is, is really supportive. Um, the greatest thing about it is I think I have a little bit more autonomy on my life, which meaning like I can decide what I want to do a little bit more, um, which is really nice. You know, I can be like, I'll, I'll do this, and then because I've done that, now I get this leeway a little bit where as an athlete, you don't get that as much. It's like, you have to be here at practice and then you have to be at the games. But yeah. In real life, you know, you can sort of adjust your own schedule a little bit more. Figure out vacation days around what you want to do instead of what the coach needs of you. Right, exactly. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, just as a side note, as I, I am an athlete, I did not preface that. I'm very sorry, everyone. Uh, I, we met playing volleyball together overseas in England. Um, but I know that it's always really fun for me during the off days because I get to wear normal people clothing, mm -hmm. but I don't really have a lot. So how is it for you coming back into the world and having only sweatpants and sweatshirts and like having to get a completely new wardrobe? Well, no, I'm, I'm an athletic coach, so I didn't. Um, I still generally wear leggings and t-shirts to work to the office every day. Um, uh, except for game days when I do like, I'll dress nice and I have, you know, work polos for official meetings and recruiting trips and stuff like that. But no, generally I wear leggings and t-shirts and that's the most fantastic part about being a coach, hands down. <laughs> I was thinking more of the like short months of marketing in Los Angeles. I mean, I'm sure that's like a fashion forward city too. Like. It started um, because I'm a bit of a diva. So <laughs> it started out as a lot of fun dressing up and um, wearing like office clothes like you see in the, the movies. And I really wanted to be like, you know, mad men. 
Um, not only that, but just the fashion in terms of fashion. And it lasted for about two weeks. And then it turns out as I was just getting busier and busier and working more ridiculous hours that I just could not maintain it. And I didn't care to. So, yeah. Went back to the sweatpants? It, real quick. Real I, mean, quick. I mean, yoga pants are considered fashionable in LA, so. That's true. Um, you know, yoga yeah, pants are a nice top. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was, it was nice to get back in um, clothes that I was more confident in. That's good. How, how is uh, everything going with, um, you know, being an athletics coach during quarantine and during this crazy time? Um, it's really hard. <laughs> I'm really a team oriented person, obviously. Um, so I really miss the teams that I work with. Mm -hmm. And I mean, while I'm still able to go into the office, it's not quite the same without the team there and holding practices. And it's also really, I'm really worried about the girls um, or the young women. They're at home. Um, I don't know if they have good internet connection to finish their schoolwork, mm -hmm. you know, like, are they working out? I don't know. They can say yes, but um, it's really going to be, a lot on them and how accountable they are while they're away. And while I believe that they can do it, they're all great people. It's still a little bit like, um, like I'm letting go of my, my children, <laughs> you know? Gotta let your babies fly a little bit. Yeah, it's really hard. I really um, miss just being in practice and that whole team dynamic. Yeah, I mean, and again, it's like they're having like a stop in their career in a sense of, you know, now they probably have a lot more autonomy over their time, you yeah. know? And I know so. like when I first stopped playing, um, it was really fun. And then it really became not fun very quickly. <laughs> you know, um, at first, like I can do whatever I want. I don't have to work out. I can eat whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. And that can be fine sometimes, but it can get you in trouble real fast if you don't, um, you know, buckle down and take care of business. Yeah. So, so hope all the girls out there are doing well. Yeah, please. Do you have them on any kind of programs that they can do at their houses or anything? Yeah, their weight coach, um, the UTRGV's weight coach, um, gave them, gave all the athletes a very specified strength and conditioning program for them while they were away. Although, you know, around the world, we don't really know how long quarantine is going to last. Mm -hmm. And we also, we don't know what equipment they have available. So while the program that they, he gave to them is very self-sufficient, it's like, you know, yeah. you know, hope for the best, really. So on a good note on quarantine, I saw your Instagram and you have LT jumping over progressively larger and larger piles of, uh, of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. LT is a beautiful puppy dog. Yes. Uh, are there going to be more Olympic, you know, competitions for this dog? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, LT is my fur baby number one. Uh, she's a little Staffordshire Terrier pit bull mix. Um, and she did win the to toilet roll jumping competition. Um, I got I have a puppy, a different puppy who's a, who's a lot bigger but way dumber. So we're trying to find ways to incorporate the other dog so she doesn't feel left out because LT just she can't win everything, you know. <laughs> so it's really hard to try to keep them even. They get jealous of each other. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, kind of ending things on like happy notes. Um, where is your favorite place that you've traveled slash or, or if it's different, where's your favorite place that you've lived? Um, my favorite place that I, I lived would have to be Paris. Um, I wasn't in the center of Paris, but I was um, about 45 minutes outside the city which is just far enough to like take the train in and jump, jump there. I absolutely love France. Uh, it was amazing. It was my favorite place by far to have lived. My favorite place to have traveled. Hmm. 
Where have you all traveled? That's really hard. Um, I've traveled a lot because um, not only with my work playing volleyball and then being a volleyball coach, but also like my, my dad is a, a rugby coach or was a rugby coach. So we used to travel a lot with him. And I just remember some really amazing times in South Africa. Uh, we were there for like a month and it's just, it's indescribable how beautiful it is. I really enjoyed that. Oh, that's fun. Um, here's a really big question. What do you think it means to be a woman today? Hmm. Well, I was prepared for this question and uh, I would like to, give me a moment, I would like to quote one of my favorite authors uh, at Lizzo Beating. If you cry <laughs> like a girl, cry like a girl. If you feel like a girl, then you reel like a girl. Do your thing, run the whole world. So I'm pretty sure she summed it up there. Perfect. I love it. 10 out of yes, 10. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. I feel like today it's really hard to pin it down specifically to what being a woman is. Um, it's, so for me, I'm very open. Uh, if you feel like a woman, then that's, that's it. You just, then you're a woman. If you feel like one, why not? Good. I like it. We're all inclusive. Yeah. Um, and then if, if someone walked up to you, if a woman walked up to you and asked you for advice and you only had a few minutes to talk to them, what would you tell them? What, what would be Leah's, Leah's nuggets of gold and advice? <laughs> um, Leah's nuggets of gold are actually probably Leah's grandma's nuggets of gold. Uh, what she told me <laughs> growing up. Um, was always chin up, chest out, and stop saying sorry. You know, just which mainly That's means so good. be confident in yourself and what you have to say. I think confidence is really key because when you're confident in who you who you are, everything else becomes easier, better, more reliable. Even if you're wrong in something it becomes easier to recognize it and make the correction. If you're not confident in who you are as a person, um, then you see it all the time. People get very defensive and argumentative, but you know, just confidence, really. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> Nana Best, love it. <laughs> yes, she was, she was the best, yeah. Do you have any final words? that you want to leave with all of the lovely women watching this and women, men, whoever? I don't think so. <laughs> I'd say uh, Texas is a great place to visit. If you guys want to come down, come to a, can I publicize? Can I shamelessly self yeah. promote here? Plug yourself, go for uh, it. UTIGV Volleyball. Um, no, nope, that's about it. UTRGV Volleyball and uh, Samantha plays for a great professional team called Dudingen Volleyball out of Switzerland. So you can follow Thank them also. <laughs> Not currently. Currently, I'm back home in San Diego. Yes. Because everyone's in quarantine. Because everyone okay, is Stay safe. Home. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Your hands. And, you know, if you're feeling anxious, if you have PMS symptoms and you're feeling anxiety or, you know, depressed mood or stress levels, you know, this is, you know, jubilance is shown to help. I'm taking it every day. It's just, you know, these times are crazy. If, if you need a little extra help, it's fine. It's fine to need that little extra help. Yes. So. Yes. Exercise. <laughs> Call your friends. Exercise gives you endorphins. Bake something. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Endorphins make you happy. Yes, happy thank you, Elwoods. In quarantine. Yeah. To misquote Elwoods. Yes. All right. That's it for this week, everyone. Thank you so thank much you. for coming on, Leah. No Sorry, problem. there was like craziness in the beginning. We were trying to figure this out forever. Yes. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Stay safe, everyone. Stay Bye. safe and wash your hands. Wash your hands. Stay inside.